So, right, I think uh, I should start. Um, hi, my name is Sebastian Müller. Uh, I'm a student at KIT in Karlsruhe, Germany. So it's also about analysis, it's also about automated signal analysis, automated signal reception, or if you want to call it that way, uh, signal intelligence. And well, what are, first of all, uh, reasons uh, for doing that stuff? So uh, first off, you may want to do spectrum monitoring. For example, in Germany, there's the Bundesnetzagentur, which uh, has to make sure there's no uh, misuse of the spectrum and that everyone stays in their uh, bands. And for this purpose, they need to, to identify where signals are and what signals are or uh, where they belong to. Uh, second, it's super cool if you can explore real-world signals, uh, especially when you're a beginner. So, um, for example, if you want to have a look at an LTE signal and uh, have a look at the frame and where are the pilots and so on, it's very hard to do that if you are not like an expert in that uh, topic. So, um, it would be very cool if everything can uh, be automated and then uh, beginners can figure out why signals work and why are the parameters chosen that way and uh, yeah, why they maybe wouldn't work otherwise. Uh, also, you can do live modulation. Simplest example would be uh, if you want to listen to a local radio station, uh, you, you're actually doing live demodulation and you can do batch processing of several signals. So um, you don't have to look at one signal because everything is happening in the background automated. There can be several signal chains that deal uh, each with one signal. So, okay, what, what do we have to do if we want to receive unknown signals? First off, we have to detect them. So the question is, where is the signal located in the spectrum and what's it bent with? Um, if we have done that, we need to mix it down into a complex baseband. And then we would do something like filter it, decimate it, uh, yeah, to, to, uh, to be able to handle the, the amount of samples. And um, next, uh, you, you would start like an iterative cycle of analysis and then, um, yeah, do, doing a step to the modulation, then anal analyze again some parameters and so on. And if you did that some, some time, you will be able to demodulate the signal. And if it's encrypted, you also have to decrypt it. So these are all the tasks that uh, are possible. Um, so what was the workflow before? This is like, I did it. Maybe you, you, have, uh, you were a bit smarter than me. But I did something like this. So first off, there is a USRP source. So I just received the signal and dropped it in a, a QT sync or frequency sync. So I just had a look at the spectrum and look and search where is energy located because normally energy means there could be a signal. Uh, if I have found what I have been looking for, I would yeah, yeah, assume or, or estimate by thumb um, the center frequency and the bandwidth. And I would try to remember that and drop in the next block, which would be the frequency translating FIR filter. This block does everything, uh, including the, the down mixing, the decimation and the filtering and the baseband. So I would uh, enter my parameters here, uh, which I uh, found out uh, while looking at the sync, the frequency <laughs> sync, and I would uh, just write the samples away to a file. Uh, then I would do some analysis, which I have done in MATLAB, I have to admit. And uh, for example, there are other tools like Python, uh, SkyPy, or Inspectrum. And um, yeah, I would, I would try to estimate all the parameters that would be necessary to finally demodulate the signal. And for demodulation, I would use GNU Radio or uh, yeah, other tools like MATLAB or uh, whatever there is, you name it. So well, this flow graph is not that cool. Why is it not that cool? 
First off, you have often to stop and adjust the flow graph, like you have to start it, have a look, estimate some things, stop it again, drop in an, more blocks, and then uh, fire it up again, and yeah, all do this all in a, in a cycle. You would often, um, or I at least, would often try to estimate by thumb all the parameters, like, okay, this could be 2.45 gigahertz, I don't know, and uh, hope that it will work out. And yeah, it's not, not possible to do any real-time analysis with this, because you always have to stop the flow graph. Mm, also, you, you need much expertise to uh, perform these steps, and uh, it's not possible for a beginner, like a one-click solution. So you, you have to really know what you are doing if you uh, yeah, tried it that way. So and this is exactly where the inspector comes in. And it tries to make these tasks I just mentioned uh, more easy. And uh, I will now go through the components or the blocks of uh, GR inspector and uh, tell you what they can do. So first off, we talked about detection. Oops. And um, if you want to detect a signal, normally we do energy detection. Like, okay, we assume when there's energy in the spectrum, there could be a signal. And this block uh, can do this for one or more signals. And it uh, works either by setting a threshold with the block parameter, or there's also an automatic uh, algorithm that tries to find um, power jumps in the PSD and uh, interprets them as signal edges. Um, there's also a uh, functionality to, to suppress narrow signals, uh, which, which helps uh, to avoid false detections. And the um, output of this block is first the estimated PSD of the input signal, and the second one, as you see, this is a message port. Uh, it passes the information about the center frequency and the bandwidth of the detected signals. So next what you would do is um, you, you want to visualize what uh, you have estimated. So there is the uh, QT GUI sync for that. And it just takes the estimated PSD from the block before and plots that um, in a QT window. Also, it takes the um, bandwidth and center, center frequencies of the detected signals and uh, marks them with edges. Yeah, and uh, next to, to the markers of each signal, there are also the properties plotted, like um, center frequency and bandwidth, and there can also be more parameters that I will show on the next slide. And um, this block also enables uh, manual selection. So if the automatic signal detection messes up because you have a bad SNR, for instance, um, you, can, you can do a drag and drop uh, selection here. And this is a screenshot of how the, the uh, GUI looks like. So what we see here are three signals in the spectrum. And as you see, the one on the left and the one on the right, uh, they just have their center frequency and bandwidth plotted uh, next to them. The one in the middle has more text. So what's up there? Um, I don't know if you can read it in the, in the back line. So this is an OFDM signal. And there is an analysis block that feeds the results back to this uh, GUI block. And the, the results get appended to the text uh, printed next to the markers. So what we can reach here is the center frequency, the bandwidth, but also OFDM, OFDM specific parameters like subcarrier spacing, number of subcarriers, cyclic prefix length. So um, now when we have detected the signals that we want to use, uh, we have to do the down mixing and decimation and filtering. And this is exactly what the signal separator block does. Um, it calculates an FIR filter for every detected signal and applies that in complex baseband. Or you can um, provide a JSON file with pre-calculated tabs so, uh, to save CPU usage during runtime. Um, the output uh, is a bit complex here. So as you see, it's again a message port. Um, and its format is like, first of a header 
that contains the signal information like signal number, center frequency and bandwidth and then uh, what follows are the complex samples of the signal. Um, now if, if we want to process the signal further um, we have a problem because there are nearly no blocks that would take my, my um, uh, message format here that I chose. So uh, there is the signal extractor. What it does is just uh, it extracts the complex samples of one signal out of this message and passes them again as complex stream as most new radio blocks uh, take uh, complex stream samples. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, and also um, the, the sample rate uh, of a signal is not known during runtime because it tries to um, sample uh, following Nyquist criteria, so there is, um, it depends on the bandwidth of the signal, what's the sampling rate of the, of the signal after the signal separator. Um, and there are applications where you need to know your uh, sample rate exactly and therefore this block also has the possibility to resample the signal to a well-defined sample rate. Um, so the, the second bigger topic I dealt with uh, is OFDM and there I uh, tried to, to write an OFDM estimator, parameter estimator. Um, we have seen the results of this blog earlier in the, in the GUI screenshot and what it does, it uh, estimates the subcarrier spacing, the symbol time, subcarrier number and cyclic prefix length of an OFDM signal. And um, yeah, as I said, uh, the results can be fed back to the QT GUI inspector sync and will be plotted next to the signal. Uh, also, there's an OFDM synchronization block. This is a surprise. It performs a frequency and timing synchronization for OFDM signals. And um, we have also some modulation classification ability. Uh, this was not done by me, but by Christopher Richardson, who was a, a Summer of Code and Space student uh, last year, and he dealt with yeah, automatic uh, uh, modulation classification using TensorFlow. So, and uh, now the cow says demo time. So, what I want to do now is uh, show you a typical uh, tier inspector flow graph. Uh, where we try to, to listen to a local radio station. So I have my USRP right here. And um, these are just the blocks I just introduced to you. So here's uh, the USRP source to talk to my USRP here. This can be exchanged by, by an, any other source that provides a signal. And then here's the signal detector, the, uh, G, the GUI inspector sync. And um, the results from here will be fed back to the signal separator where all the mixing and downsampling and the filtering will be performed. Uh, since we are only listening to one signal, we will extract it here and pass its samples as a complex stream. And what follows then is just a basic uh, FM demodulation chain. So this thing right here is um, completely GNU radio, so this was here before, and these blocks down here, this is all GR Inspector. So, let's fire it up. Okay, it's flashing my FPGA, so I maybe should have done this before. It should only take a few seconds. Okay, so now we see here, uh, actually now I have enabled manual detection because I assume the, the SNR in here is too bad to do uh, anything automatic, as you see it's pretty noisy. Um, so we have one signal here and I already have seen at 100 megahertz there is a local radio station here in Bristol. So, um, can try to listen to that and uh, I don't think it's, it's uh, quite good printed on the beamer. Uh, there are signal edges right here and uh, right here. And I can track and drop them to adjust the bandwidth of the signal. So let's try this.
there's some kind of sweet spot for the bandwidth. Maybe add some more gain. Okay, only noise. Oh, no. Okay, I, I didn't think the SNR would be too bad here because uh, at my place it worked. So let's try this one more time. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but we, we can try that, yeah. No. So, I don't know, maybe you can hear it a bit. There is some music in the background, but it's super noisy. <laughs> okay. A pity. Yeah, you can hear there's some music, maybe. <laughs> okay, okay. For the audience and in the stream. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Thank you for your attention. And uh, yeah, uh, we, we had it earlier about uh, participation and getting started in GNU Radio. And I think Google Summer of Code is a super thing to, to get started with, like I did. OK, any questions? Martin, yes. Is there any particular event that got you into uh, signal intelligence? Uh, yes, I think. <laughs> OK, I, I know what you, what you uh, want to point out. So um, yeah, at my university, we had the IEEE Signal Intelligence Challenge. And um, which uh, Martin did uh, bring to life. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, um, uh, it's all about um, detecting uh, signals in a, in a known band, but you don't know anything about them. So you have to do the things I just mentioned, like uh, detect error. As I said, uh, started with MATLAB and and uh, in Spectrum and such things, and um, yeah, that's that's what got me into this this kind of topic, and that's uh, why I also applied for GSOC last year, right? So you wouldn't happen to be on the committee that runs this challenge and is looking for students. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah, it's uh, so basically there's just an algorithm implemented there from a published paper. And um, let me think if I can recall what it really does. So, yeah, right, it's cyclostationary uh, features. And um, uh, if you, if you uh, do a fixed length correlation over the time signal, you can find out the uh, um, the used, used symbol time, I think. And then you can do the um, cyclostationary analysis, so in frequency domain and in uh, time shift domain, to, to find the, uh, the cyclic prefix length. Yeah, so it's just two peak searches in these two directions. Um, uh, concerning which, which, the O of the M, um, it's a, it's a number of samples that you have to capture, and it's it's about I think in the in the area of seven thousand samples. Right. Yeah. Right. If the SNR is bad, uh, estimation will be bad as well, of course. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I've tested it, and uh, below 7,000 samples, there are no um, reliable results available. Okay. 
And I think that's it. Thank you.